Okay, this video uh, is a comment answering video. I do want to apologize ahead of time. If you hear a lot of background noise, my children are up. This is the only chance I'm getting to film this video though, and I didn't want to go too long. Uh, also want to mention in the last video, I mentioned that it was time for voting for my Patreon supporters and out of my Patreon supporters, one person voted and they voted for uh, programming or Vim tutorials. And um, I'll discuss that more with my Patreon supporters, but I'm really excited to do some VimRC tutorials and just some Vim tutorials. I just watched a really great video on VimRC configurations and it kind of got me into it a bit. So I'll be doing videos most likely on that fairly soon. So let's go ahead and dive into these comments. Uh, so the first gentleman here said he would love to see how I set up Debian, if possible, share the script, uh, my, my installation script. And so I've mentioned in the past that uh, I have a bash script that I wrote that kind of automates how I like things set up. And I, I'm constantly tweaking it. Every time I do a new install, I add or remove stuff to it. And I actually just recently, like two weeks ago, switched from using XFC desktop to giving GNOME Shell a, dry, a try because I've been using XFC for a couple of years. Uh, so far, I'm fairly happy with it. I might go back to XFC, but next time I do a Debian install, I might change the configuration to uh, for more for uh, the GNOME shell. Uh, but yeah, uh, I could possibly do a video on just doing a Debian install. I usually use a uh, bootstrap for my installs. Um, so yeah, I, I might do a video on that in the future, but yeah, my script is up online. And actually, if you go to filmsbychris.com, you could probably go down to software and click on my notes. And here, if you type in 2015, you'll see uh, one that says my default setup to 2015. Click that and it will show you the, um, the script that I created. Uh, you'll obviously want to change your username to your username. And it's half script, half notes, you know. Uh, but for the most part, if you just copy and paste these commands into the shell, you'll install the things that I usually like to have installed by default. Get your your configuration files the way I set up. Change your root shell for or your shell for both your root user and normal user. So yeah, those are um, these are things that I do when I set up. You know, synchronizing my clock and all that stuff. So that script is there. Uh, so this person says he would like to see more live videos. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, I did a couple of live videos, and I'd like to do more too. It's just actually making the time. Right now, most of the time when I have when I make time for videos, it's like okay, I've got a little bit of time here. I just you know it isn't planned. Um, if I do more live videos, it's going to be kind of at random times, so it's kind of hard to schedule those. But yeah, I, I would like to do some more live videos. I'm actually hoping to get a nice webcam for Christmas. It's on my Christmas list, and maybe I can do some webcam uh, stuff with the live videos. Um, okay, this guy is asking questions about Caden Live in reference to another video. It's kind of weird that he commented here, but whatever. Um, so one of his problems is he's mentioning that rotoscoping isn't working on the recent version of Caden Live for him, and it isn't working for me and everyone I've talked to. So it doesn't seem like rotoscoping is working for anyone on Caden Live right now on the newest 16.08 version. Um, but uh, Blender's always been better at that, uh, and. If I ever get around to doing Blender, Blender video editing tutorials, I'd probably go over that. Uh, he had some other issues, but he seemed to have fixed them. Uh, this person's asked me to do some videos on OpenShot. OpenShot is another open source video editing software for Linux. And every time, I've tried to use it a few times in the past, and every time I can't even import my videos, I go to import them. And it says that the codecs aren't installed, which I know they are because I can watch those videos on my computer. And I never got past that. It might be a great program. Looking at other videos people have done, it doesn't seem like it's as full featured as Caden Live, um, which is another reason I haven't really put in the effort into it. Um, so I probably won't be doing any videos uh, on, on OpenShot anytime soon just because I don't use it. Uh, there's a number of comments on people, you know, saying what they want to see for future videos, but of course, if you, uh, every time I highlight something, there we go. Um, uh, if you if you really want to see videos on a certain topic, become a Patreon supporter. I, I, I they get first choice on what videos come up since they're ones paying me to make these videos. Um, but I'm, I'm I think it's great when people put comments. So a lot of people have put in comments saying they want uh, Blender videos. So I'll be sure to make sure to put that on the list of options for my Patreon supporters to choose from in the future, which it was this time around, and they didn't pick that. Um, 
so let's see. So Blender video, Blender video. Uh, this person's asking about uh, uh, Babylon JS, which I've done some videos on in the past, which I don't really use anymore because I really do prefer 3JS, uh, mainly because Babylon is good. I don't, I mean, really the reason I don't use it. I like 3JS a little bit better for some things. Babylon JS makes some things a little bit easier, um, but Babylon JS, I realized after I got into using it that it's actually created by Microsoft or owned by Microsoft, and I just don't trust them because uh, I wouldn't be surprised if they lock it down in the future. Uh, and I think 3JS has a better license. I can't remember which one, which licenses either of them use, but um, but they does ask about Blender for web, which is funny because I just looked into that for the first time just like two days ago. Um, and uh, probably won't do a whole lot of videos on, on Blend, uh, uh, blend for web. There's lots of things I guess it can do, um, but uh, I probably do videos in the future on just creating a scene in Blender and exporting it. Uh, blend for web is great because it exports things. Well, you can export them as he's asking here to a JSON file and a bin file. I haven't really tried that yet, but the other exporter can export to an HTML file, but it puts everything in that HTML file. Uh, so any images or models are all in there as like base 64 or some sort of JSON format, depending on what it is. And it's really great because it's all in one file, which is good for some things, bad for others, but it makes it real convenient to just share that file. And since it's all in one file, and I'll get more into this if I ever do do a video on it, um, that you don't have to worry about spinning up a web server, which is really simple to do, uh, because a lot of HTML5 stuff you need a web server because of security stuff because the HTML5 tries to access files on your computer and which you don't want a website doing. But with the blend for web, when it creates the HTML file, everything is all in one file. So there's no cross site issues. Everything is in there. So again, I, I, I'm not sure if I said that in a way that makes sense right now, but I may do a video on it in the future and explain it more. Then he goes into asking about animations and fur text animation to animate uh, soft bodies and cloths and stuff, which I have not really done in um, in in Web uh, WebGL at all. Um, I know that on 3JS website they have some examples of some cloth stuff, but that's actually be generated real time. I think he's asking here basically to make pre-rendered animations, uh, you know, um, but I'm not 100% sure. Uh, if not, if you're just looking for cloth simulations, go ahead and go to 3, uh, 3, uh, 3JS.org, click on examples, and somewhere in here, oh, we're the very first one, cloth. There is a cloth animation here. This is being calculated real time uh, by my computer. So it might not run well on slower machines where having a pre-rendered uh, animation might. Uh, I haven't really played with that at all. But go ahead and have a look at that. And um, so again, more people asking about uh, Blender videos, Caden Live videos. I have a few more Caden Live videos coming out, I believe. Uh, some GIMP uh, videos, again, Patreon supporters get to pick what I do videos on, but I'm glad you asked here because it keeps in mind stuff that I can offer up to them to choose from. Uh, this person asks, what's your study path? I'm assuming maybe he's asking uh, what uh, like background I have school-wise. I have never uh, taken, the, the only computer class I took was in middle school in the mid-90s uh, where we learned how to use something by Corel where you move a little arrow around the screen. Uh, that's the only computer programming class I've ever taken. Last person asked about, uh, I'm not really sure how to say this, Wacade, which is like an arcade interface. I think for Raspberry Pi, I had to Google it. Um, I haven't looked into that yet, but I'll, I'll play around with that. I have been talking to some friends of mine who want to build an arcade center, uh, which I have an arcade center, but I just have it spin up a game when it boots with some startup scripts. I don't have a, a arcade interface to switch between the games. I just never, never really needed to do that before. But uh, looking at some like RetroPie and maybe this, I think this is similar to RetroPie. I'm going to play around with some of those possibly here in the near future. So I might do a video on those. Um, I feel like... There might have been another question that I skipped. 
Do, 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 do. Or maybe it was another part of this person. Oh, right. He asks about Play Canvas, which when he asked about that, I quickly Googled it, Play Canvas. And I actually have seen this before. I have, I'm not going to be doing any videos on this in the future. Um, and because I, 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 it's open source here. I'm not sure. Well, let's, let's have a quick, quick look at the website page license. Um, so it looks like they're using some, not no, their own little license, which I haven't really read through. But uh, the reason I'm, I don't plan on using Play Canvas is because of this right here. When I see a website that says pricing and then they have different levels of ability, um, yeah, I don't, I try to avoid software like that. Now, if I had no other options, you know, this is an open source, you know, thing here, but it's just, it, it, look, look at all these red X's. These are limitations. I don't think anyone should limit you on stuff you're creating and I shouldn't have to pay to create stuff. Um, so yeah, that's why I use 3JS for this sort of thing. Play Canvas, I guess maybe it might have some functionalities that make things a little simpler. Maybe that's usually what these type of companies are going for, but I have no, I, I'm not gonna pay them for this software, I much rather donate money to the 3JS or or some other uh, free uh, HTML. What's what I'm looking for? Game engine. Pfft, why was that blowing my mind? I can't say that. Um, yeah. So that that's just my view on that. I whenever I see this, I see oh they're limiting me on what I would do. Why would I use this? Other people, I, I'm not, not telling you what to use, but that's my view on that. I see there's more red X's here than green X's or green checks. So yeah, I have no desire to use this. I would not recommend using this and I'm definitely not gonna do any videos on this. Sorry, um, sorry about that. Uh, I quickly want to mention that I do have uh, my second channel. Recently, I've been going over the last few videos I've posted are on um, radio transmissions with Arduinos and ESPs and like the very last one was controlling some lights remotely with my phone and an ESP chip and a 433 megahertz uh, radio chip. So we're looking at about $4 worth of hardware. Oh, plus the smart, the, the Zap outlets, the smart plugs, um, which are about five bucks a piece. So um, yeah, very low cost uh, lighting setup here, smart lighting system. Uh, and uh, going back to comments, I did a few videos on a arcade um, controller. I did four videos on it, and there was a nice gentleman, I say that sarcastically here, who went to each and every one of my videos and criticized me and uh, basically told me what I was doing was crap, <laughs> and uh, telling me that the fact that I spent $72 on my arcade controllers for my four-year-olds uh, arcade controller that I I should have shouldn't have bought, bought that because it's too cheap, which means it's crappy hardware. Um, man, it's a game controller for a four-year-old, and that I built out of scrap wood from my garage and some arcade parts I bought. <laughs> the fact that he went to each one of my videos to criticize me was just. I know not to feed the trolls. I did reply to one of his comments. It's just I don't I don't get people. It's like. It just wasn't fancy enough for him, and I am, and by no, and when I uh, read his comments, I thought, for sure, this guy's probably a iPhone, <laughs> an iPhone owner because shiny things impress him, and he likes spending lots of money on stuff that really doesn't make it any better. Um, no, the controllers I got were great quality. I mean, maybe they're not the top quality, but they're sturdy enough for me to use, let alone my four-year-old when she's playing a game. Anyway. Thank you for the negative comments. Um, also remember that you can always go to my website and search through both my channels. So, you know, come in here. It's not a very smart search, but you can search words here and see videos and of course click on those. And again, I showed you how you can go to my notes by clicking on software here. Uh, all my code is up either on GitHub. Uh, my This is a link where it says scripts will bring you to paste bin. Oh, no, no, I'm sorry. It brings you to my scripts folder on my website. Notes will give you a searchable version of my Pastebin account. Uh, I just wanted to make it easy. And it does do a full word search through the scripts and stuff. So I have 
over 400 scripts and I add new stuff all the time and these are these are basically just little scripts if it's a big project I put it up on github if it's just like I mean things like this just little notes here I have list of first names for males and list of uh, first names for females in case you need a uh, uh, to be able to have a list like that for some script you're writing maybe a name generator or something like that and um, notes on free voicemail and here's some Debian on Ar 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 Arduino not Arduino Debian on uh, Ar Android scripts um, so yeah again they're all searchable in a nice little format here and this is what I, I use this all the time this is where I keep my notes for when I learn how to do something so I don't forget I can always come back in here and you know search for something anyway be sure to check out all those features. You know, check out check out Films by Chris. I know a lot of people come to my YouTube channel and never go to my website. I try to put some things there. I have the RSS feed that you can use to, you know, get updates on my posts. And support will bring you to the RSC channel, which I haven't been in in forever. Going to be honest right there. Or, I'm sorry, no, support is to support me. Contact is my RSC channel. Yeah, I'm tired if you couldn't tell. Thanks for watching. I feel like this video got a little dragged on. I apologize about that. I hope that you have a great day.